Kidstown friends. We're so glad that you are here today. We are looking at having the heart of Jesus or how we can live like Jesus did. And we're so thrilled that we get to be on this journey together with you guys. Before we go visit the detectives today to check out the case that they're working on, why don't you jump up on your feet and get moving? Getting that blood flowing now will help us solve that mystery later. Yes, yeah, so we are going to play one of our kids' town favorites. We're going to play Pirate Ninja Cowboy. So Pirate looks like this. And the pirate beats the... Ninja. Ninja. Who looks like this. <laughs> and, and... The ninja beats the... Cowboy. cowboy. Get your last shoe and your horse. Yes. Okay, right. are you ready to play? Sounds good. Back to back. One. One, two... two. Three. <laughs> Ninja, Ninja beats cowboy. Beats the cowboy. Okay, let's play two more rounds. Okay, okay ready? One, One two, two, three. three. I don't know what I am. <laughs> <laughs> I win. Ah, oh, I was nothing, so she wins. Okay. Okay. Hang on, I gotta think about this one. Okay, I'm ready. One, two, three. Oh, oh it's a we tie. tied. <laughs> Hope you guys had fun playing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
Welcome back to the Bible Detective Center of Investigations. Last week, we solved the case about why Jesus spent time with people who were unloved and ignored by others. Do you remember what we discovered? Yes, that he was compelled by love, and that was his motivation of why he spent time with people that he did. Right. So this week, we're going to take it a step further. Our case is a little bit similar. One phrase that describes Jesus is friend of sinners. We want to know why Jesus was a friend of sinners. Right. Because Jesus was 100% holy and perfect. Mm -hmm. So how can you be perfect and then surround yourself with people who really aren't and who aren't even trying to be? Some of those people that we looked at last week that Jesus spent time with um, were sick or young. And that's nothing that's wrong or bad. That's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But some of the people that Jesus befriended were people that were doing things wrong. They were the tax collectors. Um, the Samaritans had some sinful habits in their culture. So the Jews were commanded to keep apart from people who were sinning. So was it wrong for them to stay separate and not interact with those people? Hmm, maybe not. If they were doing it to try and stay safe and holy and pure as they were commanded. But when Jesus came, he changed everything. That's right. And there's a clue in that. When Jesus came, what his people knew was the law and the prophets. Okay, and that's what we know right now as the Old Testament, right? Because this is what tells us about Jesus when he came. So when Jesus came, his people knew the law and the prophets. So he didn't say, I'm here so you can ignore everything in the Old Testament now because all of a sudden it's wrong. No, exactly. He was the fulfillment. What he was going to do by dying on the cross was the fulfillment of all the stuff that had been written and said back here. So once he completed those things, absolutely things would change, but it hadn't quite happened yet. The new covenant was going to replace the old covenant. Oh, okay. Let's figure out what that means because that's a great clue. Okay. So covenant means agreement. The old covenant between God and his people was that the people would obey God's commands and God would bless his people. But if they didn't obey the commands, then God would not bless them. So in a covenant, each part has a role to play. Hmm. The new covenant, once Jesus had died and paid for our sins, is that God provided a way of reconciliation, which means that there was a way for people to get back into relationship with God. And that was his part. And then our part was to believe in Jesus and know that he died for my sin and allowed that gift to change us and choose to live for God. Okay. So when Jesus was living on the earth, he hadn't died yet. He hadn't completed the prophecies and the old covenant yet. So by doing things differently, by associating with sinners, which his people said, no, you shouldn't do because that's what was commanded. He was showing them what the new way was going to be like. Hmm. So while they were obeying the commandments by keeping themselves apart from sinners before, Jesus was showing them that things were changing. That's right. Let's look at it from another angle. What were you told to do when someone was mean to you on the playground? Well, don't play with them. Choose to be friends with people who are kind and to be a good friend to others too. Right. Um, part of that is for your protection because we as parents want so much for you guys to be kept safe. You know, Jesus offered love and acceptance and help and friendship, but he didn't ever follow the people that were doing the wrong things. There's a difference there. Right. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33 says, bad company corrupts good morals. Can that be a clue to this mystery? I think that's a great verse to go along with this. Can you explain what it means to us? Sure. So bad company or hanging out with sinners mm -hmm. corrupts or wrecks good morals. Your morals are like your plans to do good things. It's how you want to live your life. Oh, that's so true. It is easier, far easier to pull someone down or talk them into doing something that's wrong than it is to pull someone up. Yeah, but that's where the help of the Holy Spirit comes in. His love is strong enough to reach any heart. So we don't have to be afraid to be friendly towards someone who doesn't act the way we know they should. 
or someone who treats us bad or someone who chooses bad behavior. We can ask the Holy Spirit um, what we should say and we can be bold and we don't have to worry about what our friends think. Huh, so the Holy Spirit makes a huge difference. So our love for people should compel us to want to be curious about them and get to know them. And the Holy Spirit helps us do that in a way that will keep us from following them into doing the same wrong things. Because we don't ever want to follow someone who you know is doing something wrong. Right, but God's forgiveness can be for anyone. And no sin is too hard for him to wash away. So if we are on God's team and are protected by the armor of God, we'll do a review of that in one of our breakouts, then we can show love to anybody knowing that that's the heart that Jesus had. Huh, well, that was a great chat. But what was the mystery again? Oh, um, why Jesus was a friend of sinners. Right. Well, I think we kind of figured some of that out, don't you think? Yeah, so his love compels him to befriend everybody, and so should we. Mm -hmm. Plus, the Holy Spirit helps us and protects us when we want to befriend even sinners. Right, and there's something else too. Tell us again what you said about the new covenant. So the new covenant, which started after Jesus died for our sins, was that God provided a way of reconciliation. So a way that we could have a relationship with him. And that was his part. And then our part is to believe in Jesus, believe that he died for our sins, mm -hmm. and then allow that gift to change us and choose to live for God. Okay, so I heard the word sin in there. Yeah, so Jesus died for sinners, people who sin. And we all sin. That's in the Bible too. Romans 3.23. Oh, so we aren't any better than the sinners around us. And Jesus wants to save us from our sins and have a relationship with us. Oh, so he wants to save sinners so that he can have a relationship with them. Right. So I think we're getting something here. Since he's in heaven, we, the church, those who believe in him, are his body here on earth. And so we're doing what he wants to have happen here on earth. So it's our job to show people who are still stuck in their sin, what a relationship with Jesus would look like. We're supposed to show them Jesus. By being a friend of sinners, so he can save them. Exactly. Now I think we found the final clue. Good job, detectives. Now go out and have a heart like Jesus and be a friend even to the sinners. <laughs> For this breakout, we have an activity that you can try with someone at home. All you need is a chair. So we are gonna keep our distance here, but you can try this at home. And so please remember though, you are not trying to hurt each other. That's right. One of you is gonna get up on the chair and the other person's gonna stand on the floor. And then I want you to grab onto each other's arms and the person on the chair is gonna to try to pull up the person that's on the floor up to the chair with them. Okay, but at the same time though, the person on the floor is going to try and pull the person from the chair onto the floor. So if you wanna try that now, you can just hit pause and then come back. So which one was easier? Was it easier to pull someone up hmm. or was it easier to pull someone down? The point of this exercise is to show you that it's easier to get pulled down to someone else's level than it is to pull someone up to your level. So if someone is sinning, it's more likely that they are going to pull you into what they're doing than it is for you to pull them up into better behavior. Yeah, and we don't want to scare you so that you only ever be friendly to the good kids, but you do need to know that we have to be cautious with who we befriend and really trust the Spirit's leading in our interactions with people who make bad choices all the time. That's right, and that leads excellently into our next breakout. Come on. This summer, we did a couple of weeks all about the armor of God. Today, we're gonna review it and why it's important. So there's a picture of a soldier in armor in your notes. And you can open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter six, verse 10 to 17. And you can follow along with us and fill in the parts on that sheet. That's right. Okay, so the first piece of armor that's listed is the belt of, do you remember? The belt of truth. If you're gonna be friends with sinners, we have to make sure we know what truth is and where to find it. Then we won't be tricked. 
right. So the next piece of armor is this breastplate of righteousness. If we are living with a heart like Jesus, then we're living a righteous life. And that will protect us from so much. That's a good piece. Third are the feet fitted with the righteousness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's a mouthful. But that means that we're ready to share the gospel and tell what Jesus has done and how he wants to save us from our sins. So that'll help us be ready to be a friend to anyone and everyone. All right. So the next one we have is the shield of faith. Trusting in Jesus in every situation is like having a shield of faith as a barrier between you and the fiery arrows. It means that you're less likely to get hurt by them. That's right. We still get hurt in life, but that's going to help us. Who remembers what the helmet represents? The helmet of salvation. Salvation is being saved by Jesus from the punishment we deserve for our sins. This is probably the most important part because if something happens to your head, if it gets hurt too badly, nothing else is going to work. And so if we don't have salvation, then all these other pieces aren't going to be of any use to us. Right. So there's one more part of this passage that is talked about. Do you remember what the sword is? The sword of the spirit. Do you remember what this is? It is the word of God or the Bible. If you know what it says, then we can use it to prove lies wrong Mm -hmm. and we can use it to teach the truth. That's right. So I want you to keep this all in mind as you go out and be friends with everyone. God has got you protected. And remember, put your armor on. Until next time, friends, may our God keep you safe and give you peace. May you learn to see others the way Jesus sees them and have a heart like his that loves them all. See you next week. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. 